this is absolutely uh, the most dangerous moment that, that we're facing. And I think one of the things to think of is that the, the Rio Earth Summit back in 1992, you know, when it, the decision was made to set up the, the climate talks, the biodiversity talks, you know, Agenda 21, the forerunner of the Sustainable Development Goals to eradicate poverty. All of that was done 30 years ago. So 30 years ago, all the world's governments talked about climate and biodiversity and poverty as the three big things that they had to solve and act with urgency on. Now, in those 30 years, more climate change emissions have been pumped into the atmosphere than the entire preceding sweep of human history. Mm. So since they decided to act, yeah. that's what's happened. Mm. And that's why we're facing such a catastrophic situation now. Now, mm. people said that the Glasgow Climate Summit was a great success. You know, people agreed, you know, made all of these pledges that would keep you know, the rise in average temperatures below the threshold of two degrees, mm -hmm. aiming for 1.5 degrees. But when you look at the actual policies, not the pledges, but the policies, of course, this is taking us way above yeah. two. Some people say 2.4, some people say 2.8. The thing is, what do you need to do to solve this problem, right? One is you need renewable energy. The other is you need a more plant-based diet. You know, those are the two things that is, at its core, are destroying this planet, right? Now, both of which are completely feasible. The plant-based diet, or a more plant-based diet, is completely feasible. You know, it uses less land, it will protect the rainforest, it will improve our health, and so on and so forth, right? So, when you look at the, the solutions that are required out there, and I'm not, I'm not saying, you know, underneath it, it's, you know, it's more complicated and some of it is expensive and some of it still needs to be, uh, you know, discovered in terms of some of the solutions that are required. But at, it, at its core, at its most simplistic, it is absolutely doable to solve this problem. Is it doable within all those, all those meetings you've had with difficult CEOs and difficult politicians? Is it feasible within the context of, you know, that, that experience you've had of the, the pushback? You would need a better quality of leadership. I mean, I think, I think there are leaders that exist out there, um, but in the main, we don't have them. You would need a better quality of leadership. And I think that you either need a better quality of leadership or you need something to happen, like with the financial crisis or with COVID or the Russian invasion of Ukraine. You need something to happen that is going to drive this change uh, to happen very quickly that isn't normally the way politicians or governments or corporations act. But as a result of something happening, they may, they may speed up that change. Now, the, the Russian invasion of Ukraine is one example, actually, of people discussing getting off fossil fuels uh, in order to not hand over, you know, a billion pounds a day to, to, to Putin. Now, some of that will go into fossil fuels from other sources, but some of it will go into renewable energy or energy efficiency. It's, it, it may be that this change in terms of our response to climate change comes as a result of a national security threat rather than a climate change threat because you know, as we discussed before, one of those is short term and is a short term response and governments are good at that. The other is slightly more long term and governments Looking and all of us are terrible at that. Looking at the picture now of how the UK government and European governments are responding, do you think they're going to take, seize that opportunity to tackle national security threat with action on climate change or are they to, to, to going certain, in the to, opposite direction? To a certain extent, yes. I you mean, if you look at the good. government, um, the target, say, for offshore wind by 2030 was 30 gigawatts. The government upped that before the Glasgow Climate Summit to 40 gigawatts. Mm. As a result of the Russian mm. invasion of Ukraine, it's now 50 gigawatts. So, you know, you're beginning to see some of these things happening in a, in a positive way.